Hello and welcome to Pereira Sports Network. Here today, this is part two, episode two of the MLB podcast here on Pereira Sports Network. Um, hope everyone's doing well. Hope everyone's having a blessed day. And I'm not alone in this podcast. Here we are with my best friend, my buddy Danny. How we doing, Danny? I'm doing good, doing good. I'm glad to be back for another episode and many more to come. Yeah, uh, baseball is indeed uh, hot in the streets. People would say that's what they say in John Boy. It's funny. Um, but yeah, a lot has happened. I think last time we were talking about like Marshall, Sean Murphy, that yeah, feels like Miles. Feels, feels like that was a really long time ago. But we come here to report another trade that I'm sure all of you know this happened about uh, three days ago. We're just going to introduce it, talk about it, and then we're going to go over these divisions, how they stack up, and our picks. Later on, we'll go over like the rest of the divisions and the leagues and who we think is going to win, whatever, before the season starts. But for now, we're just going to go over that. As Luis Arias was shipped off to the Miami Marlins, the American League batting champion in 2022 for right-hander Pablo Lopez. If you don't know already, I'm a Marlins fan, so this trade uh, pretty much hit close to home. Excuse me, of course, uh, no pun intended. But Pablo Lopez, two-starter, he's been in our organization for years. He's been a key part of that rotation since, like, 2019, 2018. Um, he's has some elite stuff. Just going to go over kind of what the Twins are getting here. Um, probably one of the best change-ups in all of baseball. Him and Luis Castillo are up there starting pitcher-wise. Um, man, like, he's a workhorse. He's going to go deep in games, which, uh, like, kind of similar to Alcantara. But he started the season as one of the Cy Young favorites, actually. Cooled off a little bit, had a couple bad starts, but then was really good. So I think the Twins are getting an absolute dude. I feel like people are underestimating um, how good Pablo Lopez is. And the other thing is they didn't just get Pablo Lopez. Jose Salas, number five prospect in our system, infielder and outfielder, Brian Chori Chorio, 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 I don't know. Uh, but he was recently signed um, from internationally. Uh, decent talent, really young, young prospects. We have no idea what's going to happen uh, with those guys. Obviously, the Marlins uh, farm system is flooded. What they get in return, Luis Arias, batting champ, clearly means they will kind of want to win now. But let me just not go on, babble on. Danny, what are your thoughts on this trade? Initial thoughts. <clears throat> I think on both sides, it's a really good deal. I mean, the the Marlins have been needing to get that lefty bat that could, you know, slap it all around the field. And on the other hand, the Twins got a – another starter, which they desperately needed. They couldn't get anyone in free agency. Well, actually, they got Chris Paddock, I'm pretty sure. Did they? They got him last year. Like, oh, no, yeah, they got – well, he was hurt, so. Yeah. For all of last year. And they actually extended him. But other than that, I don't think they got anyone in free agency or anything. Mm -hmm. So their pitching is basically the same as last year. Oh, they got Tyler Maley too, so. Yeah, Ma Melee was there last year. Uh, Maeda's coming back. Yeah. So this rotation, I mean, Paddock had Tommy John. I don't know what exactly his um like return spot is gonna be. He does have some experience in the bullpen. I think that's where he's gonna start off during the season. He has some elite stuff, but um, I Joe Ryan, dude, Sonny Gray, dude. Those are two guys that have elite ace stuff. I don't think we've seen the best of Joe Ryan yet. I think he might come up and be the ace of this staff. Um, and if Sonny Gray or Pablo Lopez is your are your is your three, that's really good, especially in a day and age now where, yeah, bullpen's really important. But in the last like two years, I've in in twenty twenty one, teams are valuing more the innings eaters. And the value of like a start a starting pitcher that can go deep in games and not diminish your bullpen, uh, we're seeing that a lot more now. Even the Rays, heck, even the Rays are using guys that could go five or six innings. Like Rasmussen was huge for them last year, 
Yeah, Jeffrey so, Springs. Yeah, exactly. And they're ex they're extending those guys. I don't think Rasmussen got his extension yet, but he probably will soon. Anyways, um, this Twins rotation definitely match. Like I like it a lot for a Twins rotation, and also yeah. their lineup. We know the damage that they can do when healthy. But before getting into that, I haven't even told the Marlins side of it yet. They get a batting champ. They get Luis Arias, leadoff hitter. He's going to be in the top of that order. They signed Gene Segura in the offseason. Uh, Jorge Soler, Avisayo Garcia last year. Their rotation is still really good. I mean, they brought in Johnny Cueto. Lazardo is going to have a full year. Edward Cabrera is going to have a full year. Trevor Rogers, hopefully full year barring injuries. Now you get Johnny Cueto, a veteran that's going to help the staff. Max Meyer should be coming back um, like by maybe towards the end of the year. Maybe not. If he does, he'll be in the bullpen. Same things with Sixto Sanchez. Sixto should – I don't know when this guy's going to come back. He had shoulder surgery in October, which is scary. This is a guy that we really thought was going to be kind of our dude next to uh, Sandy Alcantara, but he hasn't shown it yet. When he's been on the mound, he has – but he's been injured much, like, way too much. Yeah. Either way, I see this Marlins team, and, I mean, Jazz Chisholm's now is going to get moved to center field. Luis Arias and Joey Wendell in the middle infield, do I like that defensively every single day? Not really. Joey Wendell's never been an everyday shortstop. I don't know why they're not looking at Gene Segura to do that. I know he's a little old. It wasn't that long ago, though, that he played everyday shortstop, and he was pretty solid at it. Now, he's not going to be an elite defender. I know Joey Wendell's really good at third. So it's kind of playing your strengths. Gene Segura's never really played a full year at third. I don't know what's going to happen with that. There might be a lot of movement shifting. Now, Jazz Chisholm said that he's going to go out and win a gold glove in center. Don't think it's that easy. I love you, Jazz. Hmm. But it is really not that easy considering, like, you once you get out there, it's kind of when you realize when, if you talk to like these dudes that had to make the transition and learning a whole new position like that is hard, but he's athletically gifted enough to do so. Especially when like D Gordon also when he went to the Mariners, he mm -hmm. went from second base, same exact. Yeah, he had trouble. They actually are pretty similar in that aspect. But I think the key for this Marlins team is yeah, you got table setters, as we like to call it, which are these contact guys that are gonna get on base. But I need to see more from – I need to see power. Like, we need – they need slugging. They need yeah. slugging. There were a lot of games last year. I watched a lot of Marlins games where I'm like, yo, if we could just put up, like, three runs, four runs a night, we'd probably be in the – we'd definitely be in the playoff hunt considering how good the pitching was. We were They were only five games out of it by the All-Star break. People forget that. Maybe less. They were, like, three games under 500 when that – Last spot in the National League was kind of weak. The Phillies hadn't started yet. Now, they would have been in contention if they were just, like, the 20th best offense in the MLB, but they were, like, 29. So, <laughs> it wasn't not enough. That's to do a lot with Garcia and Soler starting off extremely slow. So, I think this team needs – that's the X factor. I think if those two guys are hitting and the bullpen isn't the atrocious either – which they do have some names, and we all know the bullpens usually are crapshoots uh, coming into a season. But I think this team is, like, maybe a trade away from in the in that pen to, like, be able to contend for a playoff spot. I don't think they will. I think they're a little young, and I think they're just missing that, like, pop that I don't think Garrett Cooper, Avisayo Garcia, and Soler, yeah, if they all click, they can. What are the odds of that, though? There's still rumors of you guys getting you league or Rio, so there is, but that's another contact bat. But I do like the veteran presence. I just don't know where he's gonna fit because I mean DH is maybe you know, Soler, and then you got Cooper at first. You got in the outfield Garcia. I mean, you could put Soler every day at left, and then even though he does have some injury history, I don't know. You could put Soler every day at left, but I like Dela Cruz. I like what he brings to the table. I think another year of experience will help him. He's a pretty complete ball player, but the Marlins are better than the public anticipates. I feel like yeah. the general public, and I don't blame them for not thinking they're that good because they're the Marlins. But I think on paper, 
And from what I've seen every single year, they're this is probably the best team I've seen in a while. And they should they could be a contender. I don't think they have enough in that division to make make the playoffs, but I think by 2024, if they just stop trying to fool the Marlins fans to think they have no money, because they have all the money, they can spend money, guys. Like Sherman has deep pockets. I don't but like this is a pretty impressive roster with such a low payroll, in my opinion. Yeah. I just think they just they just need to throw that cash out. I think Xander would have been a great get fit, but uh, that's not like a conversation to be had right now. Let's just jump right in talking about the playoffs to what we think is going to happen in these divisions. We're going to start first with the AL. Before, before we go into that, what's your grade on both teams? All right, yeah, good question. Um, I'll say Marlins, B, and Twins, B+. plus Because I think Luis Arise, I mean, Baldelli was saying how that's going to be really rough in the clubhouse, and Luis Arise was a fan favorite, and he did a lot for that lineup. Now they don't really have kind of that all-contact guy, and they have a couple all-power guys. I mean, yeah. actually just kind of Joey Gallo. But Nick Gordon, I think, can break out this year. So I'll give them a B plus. I'll give the Marlins a, a B. Because maybe they could have gotten a little bit more for Lopez. But I don't know. I, I I mean, batting champion is no scoff either. They did give up two good prospects. So that's why I'll give the Twins the B plus and Marlins a B. I'm going to give the Marlins a B minus because they did. I, I like the trade that they did. But they gave up. I feel like they gave up. Like they could have gotten more. Like maybe like a rise and another prospect. But I feel like they didn't. Like they could have definitely gotten a top, like on their their tenth prospect or something. Oh, another thing. This Marlins team prided themselves on defense last year. It's why they were in it sometimes. But and now I they might be taking a hit. But this team is still pretty fast. So. We could still see them lead the league in stolen bases. I didn't even mention John Birdie. He's going to get playing a lot of playing time. Also, J.J. Blade, big prospect, had his flashes last year. We could see a breakout. A lot of a lot of young prospects, except Ali Rutschman and Julio Rodriguez. Yuri Perez as well. Yuri Perez could be coming up. But I think Blade's, Blade's a dude. Like, he has the swing. So I think I, we could see him break out, and we never know. With it. That's a slugger right there if he lives up to his potential. So who knows? Uh, so, yeah, let's get right into it. AL Central first. Danny, you're leading off. These are your picks. So winning the division, I think it's going to be the Guardians once again. I mean, for what they did last year, they were amazing, and they're, they only got better. Um, The Twins, I have them second but not making the playoffs. Third is the White Sox, fourth the Tigers, and then fifth the Royals. I mean, they trade away stuff, if anything. They did um, get happen, but I don't see a direction. I'll go over that later, but yeah, go on. Yeah. But um, I have the Twins second because, I mean, their their team is fun. Like, they kept Correa. They have Miranda third, Nick Gordon not second. Um, you know, they have... Now they don't have a rise anymore. Probably Karoloff is going to play first. With or They also have Jorge Polanco, which I didn't mention. Yeah, him and him or, or Gordon will DH. Yeah. Um, and then they also have, like, Kyle Farmer, who gave, they got this offseason. Buxton, if he could stay healthy. That's the big – that's, I feel like, the X factor. Like, they need Buxton to stay healthy. If, if Buxton stays healthy a full season, I see them winning the, the division 100%. You just don't trust me. I just don't I we've been saying that for like the past three years. And like he's he had last year he had one of the best starts I've seen. He was like hitting a home run every day. It was sick. And then with his glove and his speed, like he's just a five tool player. But he just can't stay on the field, which sucks. And Max Kepler, he's a great, great outfield glove. Just haven't seen the bat, you know, be that good since his rookie year um the white Sox, they're just a crap shoot to be honest they got they lost a brave that's a good word that's uh, a good word <laughs> they got yeah. like, Hendrick, like, Hendrick, 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 
how are you gonna get like how are you gonna let a Brady walk after he's been that dude since he got from Bears? After a bunch of years, like what was it, eight years? Yeah, fourteen through twenty two. Yeah, eight years. Uh they have Moncada who also has his injury problems. Tim Anderson's a baller. I like him. Um Grandal can't stay on the field. Ben Attendi, they just got who I love. I wanted the Yankees to keep him, but you know sometimes stuff doesn't go our way. Luis Robert, another guy who I wish could stay on the field, but last year he did pretty well when he was back. And then on right, they have like Gavin Sheets or uh, oh no, actually no, Gavin Sheets would play first now. I'm pretty sure. And then someone else would be playing right. Yeah, uh, I think that's actually solid. Very pretty similar to mine. I kind of agree with the with the White Sox take. I also think the Liam Hendricks with the non Hodgkins on foam. Of course, we're praying for him. Uh, that kind of is gonna like shoot them in the foot. They don't have that's a leader in the clubhouse that is really important to them. But let's go to my picks. I have the Twins. In first place, the Guardians in second. I don't see them making the playoffs. I, I mean, I could, but, like, I <clears throat> I wouldn't pick them. White Sox in third. Tigers four. Royals five. I'll leave the Twins for last just because I have a – like, I really – I have a big take on them. I'll go from down up. Royals, no direction on this team. I have no idea what's going on. Mondesi, they just shipped him off. It was a guy, oh, yeah, so that, was a guy that they thought – excuse me – <clears throat> that was a guy that they thought was like they could develop. He just never had that big like year, big jump. So now they're saying that they might trade Hunter Dozier. They have like these kind of decent young starters, but I don't know what they're going to do. They signed Chapman. That's probably just a guy they're going to trade. I don't know what's going on. I don't see Bobby Witt winning anytime soon. It's kind of a, I don't know. They have like no direction and it kind of stinks. Cause that's a like when I've one of my first years watching baseball was 2015 and or 2014 2013 was like my first year, but like seeing them how dominant they were, how electric that stadium was, like the Royals kind of felt like like kind of achieved. So I'm not not just because they were in Kansas City, but like they felt like no one wanted to play them. They were just gonna run over all the competition. The stadium was electric. Anyways, those kind of days are are over for now. Maybe I hope they get good because it was so they were so fun to watch. That city is awesome. Anyways, let's go to Detroit, another team that was really good in those years. They again they made moves last year, so I applaud them. AJ Hinch is their manager. Uh, he in 2021 they had a really good year. They had one of the best second halves in the in the American League. So they, they did that, signed Javi Baez, Eddie Rodriguez, and then got worse. So that was kind of weird. They I their bullpen is really like they just signed, they just uh traded Gregory Soto. So I don't really see like a direction, but I still think they can win games. I think they can be frisky. I wouldn't be surprised if they win 78 games just because of that. I've seen them do it. I love Casey Mize. I love uh, – I think Spencer Torkelson can break out this year. Uh, what's this guy's name? Schoolball. Pretty good mm-hmm. starter. And then Rodriguez could just bounce back. Anyways, let's move on to the White Sox. White Sox, I don't – they're, they're going to be missing two of their uh, biggest clubhouse personalities. And there might be some division between – actually, I'm not going to get into that. But anyways, they're, they're missing two of their biggest clubhouse personalities in Abreu and now Hendricks. I think that's a big shot for them. Now, Andrew Vaughn could – they love him at first, like for him to be more comfortable there a full year. That's kind of why they let Abreu go. I just don't think it's going to be that simple for them. I don't like them this year. I think they're going to be mid again. So let's move on to the Guardians. Guardians, I really love what they did last year. I They didn't do much this offseason, though. Like I'm a little bit underwhelmed. They only got Josh Bell, which he could be like really good. But still, I don't see I, – I just don't see – I love the bullpen. The bullpen's really good. So, I think this team might win, like, 86, 87 games. And still, I don't think it could be enough. The lineup might be inconsistent throughout the season. I could very much see that happening. What are the odds that Ahmed Rosario leads the American League in hits again? That Andres Jimenez is an all-star again? We need to see it again, like, after 
they got a good catcher in Mike Zunino, uh, but they have some holes in that lineup that I don't know how consistent they're going to be. Like, they got to bank on Oscar Gonzalez and Miles Straw to be solid throughout the year. But even if they are, I still think this Twins team is going to run away with the division. I see them winning, like, 93 games. This Twins team, I see. I think they're going to be very good. One thing that you mentioned about Buxton getting hurt, they made a really big signing that's going extremely under the radar, or they traded for him. Michael A. Taylor, he's going to start like 60 games maybe, or maybe like he's he's kind of a fourth outfielder, but he might start 30 games in center for Byron Buxton to get to rest his legs, and they'll be probably really patient with him. They'll probably DH him a lot. So he doesn't get hurt. I think they have a plan this year with that, like a really good one, because I think Michael A. Taylor, he's had good years. He's shown his flashes. They signed yeah. Christian Vasquez. He's a stud behind the play. Sorry, what would you say? No, I was going to say he's like a really good uh, uh, center field. He's a gold glove finalist almost every year. So Yeah, exactly. So uh, now, of course, with the bat, Buxton is way more dynamic. But Buxton – can't DH a couple days. They have depth in that lineup. They signed Kyle Farmer, who's a utility. I just see, I think Gallo, now without the shift, who knows? He maybe could break out. And the most important thing is Carlos Correa. That was huge for the city. I mean, to just sign, that's the first, like, marquee free agent that the Twins signed to a big deal in how long? Probably ever. Like, I can't remember. Like, Joe Maurer was there for years, but... He was there. Oh, Marno, like, yeah, he he grew up there. And Marno, yeah, I think Marno started there. I'm, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know. But or maybe he started with Colorado. I have no idea. No, he went there after. All right, yeah. So I think when was the last time they signed a really big free agent like Correa? Probably never. So that's huge. Another uh, your shortstop, your leader, gonna bring the clubhouse together, bring a different energy. Opening day's gonna be rocking, it's gonna be electric. He's now his second year. He's going to be more comfortable. I expect an offensive breakout. Like, again, even though he was really good last year, in my opinion, he's the best shortstop in the MLB. But with his intangibles, another year in that ballpark, in that uh, team, on that team, in that city, whatever, I think he's going to be even better. Now he knows he's going to be there for six, seven years. He's not going to be stressed about it. I think he's going to be great. So I see this, this Twins team contending in the American League now with that addition of Pablo Lopez, this really good rotation. And the bullpen is no joke either. I know I'm running a little long, but Jorge Lopez, Joan Duran, Griffin Jacks, Emilio Pagan, they got some dudes. Royce, Chris Paddock might come back and fill in a spot in that pen. You know, We know we said that earlier. He could be electric. And Royce Lewis, another one that can play almost every position on the field, and he's their top prospect, should be coming back from his torn ACL. But that's the AL Central. Any comments before we move on? No, I think we hit on every spot. But, yeah, so we just disagree with the top. But American League's going to be loaded, so I just don't see the Guardians having enough juice to make it. Anyways, moving on to Danny's picks in the NL East. Go. So, number five of Nationals, and no question about that. Their team is not good at all. Uh, Marlins, four, even though they made – Great moves this offseason. Uh, the Mets had three, which is very controversial, but um, I'll get to that in a little. Uh, two have the Phillies, and then ones have the Braves winning the division uh, once again. So I have the Braves won because even though they got, you could say, oh, they lost Dansby or whatever, they still have a really good squad. And Okuna wasn't even like, 80, well, he wasn't even like 70, 80% of what Acuna really is, and they still won the division. I mean, he was, he wasn't really that, he was good, but he wasn't that, oh, what Acuna, what we have seen from him. He's easily could be an MVP candidate. Yeah, I think second year he'll be way more comfortable. He'll be great. I yeah, agree. exactly. He, he's an, he's a great ball player, five tools. Reminds me of like Vladimir Guerrero, kind of. Um, the number two of the Phillies is the best Phillies team we've seen since 09, I guess. Um, they got they just went out, spent 300 million on a shortstop that they desperately needed, Trey Turner. They have Bohm, who could we know what he could do. Um, Bryson Stott's a great player, 
they have a second. And the rotation is great. I mean, you can say, oh, Harper is going to – is going to miss time, but I think Castellanos or whoever's going to play right could fill in the spot for at least a couple of months until he comes back, and we all know what he could do. He's he won an MVP and everything. But three, the Mets, if that Correa, if they signed Correa, they would have, I would have had another at number one because that would have been absolutely ridiculous. But their rotation is really old. I mean, they're Youngest guy, like you mentioned before the pod, who's 30, who's 30 Kodai Sengai, who's a rookie. But we have to see how he's in a transition. And the uh, Verlander, obviously a great signing, Cy Young winner. But I don't know what he – has, he hasn't been – he wasn't great in the playoffs, but we're not, that's a regular season. But I don't know. I just have a feeling in my heart that's going to be – they're going to be three. They're just going to met again. Because you're a Yankee fan. Anyways, go on. And then four Marlins. I mean, I don't know how they're going to get past the Mets, Phillies, or Braves. For like yeah, it is. Years. Yeah. I kind of feel bad for you, but. <laughs> I mean, hey, four teams can make the playoffs in the division. I just don't see that. I mean, the Central is kind of weak, but that would mean like the Dodgers or the Padres would have to oh, miss yeah. Another stack division. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think you kind of you did that. That was pretty good. Pretty good picks. I think a lot of it's a little frisky putting the the Mets at the three. But I'll just quickly go over mine. These are my NL East picks. I know I said a lot about the Marlins Nationals. By the way, I think they might be a fun watch for like some games. Mackenzie Gore, Josiah Gray, two young studs, C.J. Abrams breakout. Who knows? Um, I don't. I think they're gonna win probably like sixty games, but. They'll have they'll probably have some fun young talent. Who knows with that rebuild going forward? The Marlins at four, as I said earlier, this team can be frisky, can win a couple games, can win some games. Just don't see them going over anyone here, barring injuries. Uh, so uh, like on paper, I just can't say like I wouldn't bet it. I think it's possible, but I would not bet it at all. Hmm. It's probably the year where it's like most possible. I'll go Braves at three. That seems really low. That's your division winner, Danny. How can you put the Braves at three? I know they've dominated this division for years, and that's kind of why I wanted to put them at one just for that because they've been there, done that, and they have that pedigree. When I think of that pedigree, though, I think of, like, two of the main guys that I think of other than, like, Acuna, Albies, Freddie Freeman and Dansby Swanson. I know Freeman was gone last year. It seemed like no problem. But Dansby Dansby is gone now, too. Those are two dudes that had a really big voice in that clubhouse. And if you guys do not remember, they started 2021 off super slow. They were at 500, like 100-something games in. They were they were treading water. That division was so weak that they were able to just steal it when they got hot. Last year, too, they started off super slow until they, after, like, what was it, in May, after May or, like, during June, I don't know, like, late May, they just went – they started this crazy run – and had, like, the best record, like, we've ever seen. They, they would have been on pace to, like, break every record if they would have had that pace for the entire year. And they had it for about five, four, four or five months. I just don't see that happening, though, because I don't, I don't see the voices and I don't see the consistency. Dansby was a dude there that was there all 162 games and was your guy, super durable, 800-something OPS, really good defense at short. And now they're missing that. So I think that those two voices gone are going to hurt them this year because I feel like if they go on another slow start, are they going to recover as well? Maybe not. They're a really young team. Von Grissom, question mark. Let's see how he reacts to a full season. Marcelo Zuna, you have no idea if he's going to be able to play. Uh, Sean Murphy, um, new destination. Let's see how he adjusts. I think he'll do well. Well, anyways, Michael Harris, second year. Now people have um, film on him or whatever. Alzi Albi's coming back from an injury. Eddie Rosario is also pretty injury prone. They have some depth, but I don't see it as much. Now, Mike Soroka, if he comes back and this rotation is Max Freed, Kyle Wright, Charlie Morton, Spencer Strider, Mike Soroka, that could be the best rotation in all of baseball. And I love Rysel Iglesias. So, like, it hurts me to put them three. I still think they're going to make the playoffs. Anyways, let's go to the Mets. 
I'll put the Mets to Buck Showalter led team. I think they'll just be more consistent. Last year we saw them go through so much adversity, like so many injuries, like McGill, like all these dudes, the Grom, all these people were hurt. Yet they still just found a way to win games. I think they're going to be very desperate this year. I think they're going to want the ring. So they could run everything I'm saying right now. They could run with the division, but they're really old. So I don't. I just feel like the Phillies have a little bit more, which I'll get into almost very soon. And like we said earlier, I mean Jose Quintana's 34. He's their second youngest starter. Their bullpen is pretty old too. Edwin Diaz is one of their youngest relievers, but they do have some depth in the rotation if McGill comes back or is just a long relief guy. Eliezer Hernandez has had some good starts in the MLB. They could be. I think they're going to be really good. They could win 100 games again. But I'm going to go pick the Phillies. If you know me before, I was very, very hard on the Phillies. I used to call them the 2017 Marlins because I just thought they were going to be a break. Harper was their Stanton. And then their pitching wasn't going to be that good. But, oh, boy, was I wrong. And this is the first time that the Phillies actually have a bullpen on paper. I mean, Dominguez, Alvarado. Wait, my thing's not loading. I think I have it off the top of my head anyways. They had the, they got Dominguez, Alvarado. They signed Matt Strom. Uh, Craig Kimbrough. Craig Kimbrough. They have dudes in the lineup. Bryce Harper's going to be back, like, probably around May. He's going to DH, though. Castellano's second year should adjust, should be great. And I feel like Rob Thompson's going to be like, yo, we got to a slow – we got off to a slow start last year. We can't do that this year. That could uh, have us miss the playoffs. And he's going to emphasize that start. And they're just going to ride it for the rest of the year, especially once Harper comes back. That's my NL East picks. I think they're solid. No, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I just don't see the Braves making it. Big. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, they have – this is the one year where they have a lot of question marks. So, yeah, but that's why I have them there. They start Boston Riley. But... They do. They do. I'll probably be wrong. They'll probably be the one seed. And we'll look at this and be like, man, wow. Like, but yeah, uh, any final thoughts? Oh, um, Yandy Diaz just got an extension. Hooray, Rays. Good for the Rays. They're actually sending money. Yeah, and a really cheap one, actually. I feel like he would have gotten a lot more of the open market. He loves, he probably likes it there, though. Also means that uh, Yandy Diaz and a Rosa Rain altercation probably doesn't mean anything. That happened like in September. Oh. But yeah, two uh, Cuban dudes. Yeah, two Cuban guys. But yeah, uh, I, Marlins. Watch for the Marlins this year, which I say every single year. And 2020 was the only time I was proven right. I was actually making fun of you all. They weren't. They're not making any uh, deals. This no, yeah, that. and Chichi Gonzalez was like our only. Chichi Gonzalez, guys. oh, your biggest move. And then they went out. They've actually done pretty well. This is the best off season in, in a while. In a really, like a little, really long time. They have to spend money though. Like, what was their it, last? What was their last like offseason move? Freaking 2018, 2017. Trading, like, like, trading everyone away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. But it was those winner trades. What? Literally for a bag of chips, Starling, Mar- um, Starling Castro, and like. Castro, Ooh, I love Castro. He gave me a he gave me a baseball once. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that should be it for the pod. That was pretty good, pretty uh, analytical today and breakdown-ish. We'll go over, of course, as we said um, before, like the rest of the MLB, make our picks, make some World Series stuff, have a little more debate, uh, debate type discussion. Should be great. Thank you guys so much for watching. By the way, if you're all the way here, like that's awesome. Hope you all have a wonderful day. God bless. Have a blessed day. A uh, blessed weekend. Football tomorrow. Expect to see a really big football episode coming up. Maybe tonight. We don't know. We'll see. Love y'all. Be blessed. Oh, shoot. I pressed the wrong button.